The call to worship is taken from Psalm 25, verses 4 to 7. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good.
Dear God, help me to praise you in both good and bad times, because you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Good morning, kids, and welcome to CM Worship for October the third, twenty twenty-one. My name is Pastor Amy, and I'm glad that you are here to join us, either virtually on YouTube or in person. Well, once again, we are starting a new month. This is the month of October, so let me introduce our new theme. Our new theme for this month is this: Custom Creations. Let you be you. And our topic for this month is this: Individuality. Discovering who you are meant to be, so that you can make a difference. So let me ask you a question: Do you look like anyone in your family? Maybe you look a little bit like your mom or your dad, or maybe you have the same nose or hair like your brother or sister. Who do people say that you look like、um, the most? Well, for me, most people say that I look like my mom. Here's a picture of my mom when we went to Taiwan on a mother-daughter trip. Can you see the family resemblance? Well, if you take a good look, you'll see that we're about the same height.、Uh, you'll see that we have almost the same coat, and our glasses are very similar. Some people might even say that we talk and look alike. Well, I don't think anybody has any doubt in、uh, their minds that this is my mom,、uh, because we come from the same family. And but do you know what? We are also made as unique individuals. We each have our own personality and our unique character traits that make us different from each other, even though our DNA makes us look similar. So, what about you? Do you look like anyone in your family? Maybe later on in the day, you, you and one of your family members can stand next to each other in front of a mirror and see if you can see any similarities. In Genesis、uh, chapter one, verse twenty-seven, it says that we are made in God's image. Does that mean that we look exactly like God, or we act exactly like Him? Well, not exactly, because there's no way that we can truly be exactly like God, because God is、uh, divine, right? He is、uh, He is God. And we are humans, but when God created us, He created men and women to be His image bearers, to reflect His character and His qualities. So, how is that possible? Let's watch the Bible video、uh, to find out more. The Bible, it's sixty-six books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much. Made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the Book of Genesis, chapter one, verses twenty-six through twenty-eight. In the beginning, God took nothing and made everything. From darkness, God called out light. God poured out waters and stretched the sky far overhead like an unpainted canvas. He shaped dry land and canyons and great mountain ranges, and then decked them out with trees and vines and plants of every kind. God spun the moon and sun and stars and planets out into space, and then He filled the oceans with fish and the sky with birds. God thought up an amazing variety of animals to crawl and hop and race over the earth. All of this was incredible, unbelievable, the most artistic show of power ever. God made complex atoms and cells smaller than the eye can see, all the way up to vast spaces stretching across the universe farther than we can imagine. And yet, all of this was just a warm-up to God's most spectacular creation: people. People. It's true. We're made of the same atoms and cells and elements as rocks and plants and animals, but unlike anything else in God's creation, we are made in God's image. Then God said, "Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the livestock and all the wild animals." And let them rule over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in His own likeness. He created them to be like Himself. He created them as male and female. You are made in God's image. Now that does not mean God shares your eye color. 
or your freckles, or even your quirky smile. But it does mean that you were designed for God to shine through you. You were made to show the world God's love, God's grace and mercy, God's joy, God's peace, God's kindness, God's wisdom. You and every person you'll ever meet are of infinite value because you're made in the image of God. And here's what's even more amazing. God didn't design us to turn into a bunch of little robots who look and act the same when we follow him. Instead, the more time you spend with God, asking him to transform your thoughts and words and choices, the more you become uniquely you. As you follow Jesus and reflect God's light more clearly, you'll be able to do the things that God has designed for you and no one else. So next time you look in the mirror, remember, you're looking at the image of God and no one in this world can reflect him just the way you do. Okay, welcome back. We have learned in our Bible video that human beings are made in the image of God and they were created on the sixth day. He did this on purpose so that we could reflect his character and the qualities to the world that he created. No other creature or created thing that God made is made in the image of God except for us. So that makes us pretty special, right? So how do we reflect God's image? In what ways do we do that? Well, there are three ways that we can reflect God's image. Uh, point number one, because we are made in God's image, we have the ability to worship God, our creator. Worship is our outward expression of our gratitude and love towards God. We were made to worship him spontaneously and wholeheartedly without reservation. We are the only creatures in all of creation that has the ability to worship God. And worship is not limited to just the songs that we sing on Sundays or praying to God and thanking him, but worship is our love response to God. Let's say when we give offering to the church, that can be an act of worship. When we do something kind and nice to somebody uh, who is in need, that can be an act of worship. Or when we give our talents and our gifts, we use our talents and our gifts to uh, serve others, that can also be an act of worship. Everything we do for God is considered an act of worship. And one of our chief purposes in, in life is to worship God and to enjoy Him forever. When we worship God as our creator, we will reflect God's image to others. And what is the second thing we do to reflect God's image? Well, we reflect His character traits in our life because we are made in God's image. The more time we spend with God in prayer, and obeying his words in the Bible, the more we will become like Christ in our character and in our conduct. In a Bible video, we learn that as image bearers, we reflect Christ through the fruit of the Spirit that is developed in us. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is not developed by us working hard to achieve it, but the Holy Spirit develops these characteristics in us. The, these are characteristics such as love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness, faithfulness, kindness, goodness, and self-control. When we allow the Holy Spirit to develop these qualities in us day by day, then we start to reflect the image of God to those around us. And what is our final thing that we should remember when it comes to uh, being an image bearer? Because we are made in God's image, you are special to God. You are precious in His sight. Let's read a memory verse uh, for this month to solidify that thought. In Psalm 139, verse 14, it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. So what does that mean? To be fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, that means that even before you were born, when you're in your mom's tummy, that God was already in the process of forming you and creating you to become the person that you are today. The way God created you is not a mistake. It is done intentionally. You are a custom creation, a one-of-a-kind creation that God has made to glorify the Lord. And personality-wise, God has made us with strengths and weaknesses. And so let me, let me use myself as an example. For myself, I'm not very good at math and science, but I'm better at art and music. So I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
And did you know that God made me to be left-handed, to write with my left hand and not with my right hand? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And God made me a little bit shorter that, and not very tall, um, but I am fearfully and wonderfully made. To think that God made each one of us with certain strengths and weaknesses on purpose helps us to accept ourselves for who we are so that we can make a difference with what God has given us and bless others. So this week, let's make a, a list. On one side, write down your strengths that God's given you. On the other side, write down all the weaknesses that God has given you. And then I want you to affirm yourself, both the strengths and the weaknesses, and remind yourself that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God created you just as you are. He loves you very, very much. And you are not a mistake in his eyes. You are precious in his sight. So let's celebrate our uniqueness today. So let's recap one more time. What are uh, the, the th three things that uh, remind us that we are made in God's image? Because we are made in his image, we can worship God. Because we are made in his image, we can reflect God's qualities and character. And finally, because we are made in his image, we are special to God. May these three truths remind us that uh, we are to live as image bearers and to glorify God in everything that we do. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for making us in the image of God. Help us uh, every day to uh, trust you, to help us to accept ourselves for who we are. We thank you, Lord, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you did not make any mistakes when you created us. And uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, everything that you've done for us, and teach us how to worship you in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's receive the benediction for today. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty and dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week and see you next Sunday.